perform a pre-ride inspection before each ride to detect any potential problems that could occur during operation. The pre-ride inspection can help you monitor component wear and deterioration before they become a problem. Your pre-ride inspection should be as much a part of your preparation routine as checking the weather forecast before heading out for the day. Correct any problems that you discover. See an authorized Can-Am dealer if necessary. Start your inspection by walking around your vehicle. We suggest that you start with the tires by looking at tire condition. Next, check the tire pressure using the pressure gauge provided with your vehicle. Refer to the safety label affixed on the lower console near the cup holder to find out what the recommended pressure in relation to the load that you need to carry is. Never set the pressure below the minimum. Underinflated tires can dislodge from the rim. After dealing with the tires, do a quick visual check for damage to the wheels and lug nuts. You should twist each wheel lug nut by hand to be sure nothing is loose. Next, look underneath your vehicle and check for any signs of fluids on the ground, which would indicate you have a leak somewhere. Check drive shaft boots and protector condition. Check that cargo is properly loaded and secured in all storage compartments of your vehicle. Make sure that you do not exceed the maximum cargo weight of any of the compartments and that overall weight is within the limits of your vehicle. Then make sure that the upper and lower tailgates are adequately latched and that the cargo bed is secured. If you are hauling a trailer, you must also verify that it is securely attached to your vehicle and that the tongue weight is not over limit. Check if seats are properly latched. Now insert your ignition key and turn to the position number two so the lights come on. Check that the multifunction gauges cluster is powered and self-testing. Now walk around your vehicle by checking the functionality and cleanliness of the headlights, taillights, and reflectors. Go back to your controls and press on the high low beam switch and check that the headlights are still working properly. Now check the seat belts and lateral nets condition and verify buckle operation. Now it's time to put on your helmet and the rest of your riding gear. Next, press on the accelerator pedal a few times to ensure it operates freely and returns to the rest position when released. If it does not, do not start your engine. Take the vehicle in to have it repaired. If the accelerator pedal is working properly, press down on the brake pedal and make sure you feel firm resistance and that it fully returns to position when released. Now press the start button to start the engine and check the fuel level and see if any special messages appear in the cluster. Turn the ignition switch to off to verify if the engine will shut down. Restart engine. Verify that your steering operates freely by turning the steering wheel in both directions several times. Now, drive forward a small distance slowly to verify that everything is moving freely and normally. Then apply your brake to test for proper stopping. You're almost ready to go on your first ride. Before you go out for a ride, it's very important to familiarize yourself with the handling of your vehicle by practicing in a controlled setting. You can do the exercises as described in your operator's guide. If possible, it's also a very good idea to take a more formal training course to sharpen your skills and increase your knowledge. We will briefly review the recommended exercises. First, you need to find a suitable area to practice and perform the following exercises. It should be at least 150 feet by 150 feet, or about 45 meters by 45 meters, an area without obstacles like trees and rocks. Once you've selected a suitable location, it's important to gain permission from the owner for you to practice. We will rapidly review together the main exercises you should perform. Turning is one of the most frequent causes of accidents. It's easier for the vehicle to lose traction or roll over if you turn too sharply or going too fast. Slow down when you approach a turn. First, learn how to perform slight right turns at very low speeds. Release the throttle before starting to turn and slowly reapply the throttle when turning. Then do the same, but this time maintain the throttle at the same position while turning. Finally, do it again while accelerating slowly. 
Note how your vehicle reacts in these different exercises. We recommend releasing the throttle before entering into a turn to help initiate directional change. You will feel the lateral force increasing with speed and with your steering input. The lateral force should be maintained as low as possible to make sure it does not cause the vehicle to roll over. Practice doing a U-turn. Start to move slowly, then gradually turn the steering wheel to the right until you have completed the U-turn. Repeat with different steering input and always at a very low speed. As mentioned before, do not ride on paved surfaces because the vehicle behavior will not be the same, increasing the risk of rollover. The next step is important because you need to get used to using your brake. Pressing on the brake pedal firmly while your vehicle is running will help you to feel the braking force of your vehicle. Do it at low speed first and then increase the speed. The last step involves using the reverse gear. Learn how the vehicle handles in reverse and reacts with steering input. Always perform this exercise at slow speeds. Now that you can start your vehicle, you should learn how to stop your engine quickly in an emergency. While running at low speed, simply turn off the ignition switch. This is to familiarize you with the vehicle's reaction when the engine is turned off while driving. Crossing obstacles like logs, rocks, and ruts is risky and should be avoided as much as possible. Your vehicle will respond differently to different obstacles, so be extra careful in these situations. Keep your speed slow, approach the obstacles, and apply a little throttle when the tires touch the obstacle, and release the throttle when the front tires clear the obstacle. If only one tire comes into contact with the obstacle, don't apply the throttle. Let the momentum of the vehicle carry you over the obstacle. Never cross water deeper than the bottom of the vehicle floor. Engine damage and injury can result from crossing deeper water. Also, the tires are very buoyant and can cause the vehicle to float. This is especially dangerous in fast-moving currents. Before crossing any body of water, Find out how deep the water is by stopping the vehicle and physically checking the water depth. Try to avoid steep inclines. If you're not careful, you could overturn when you're going up or down hills. When climbing hills, you should drive straight uphill using a steady speed. Avoid acceleration to minimize the risk of tipping over. If you feel the slope is getting too steep, stop and go down the hill in reverse while using the brake gradually. Never coast downhill with the vehicle in neutral. Side hilling your vehicle is one of the most dangerous types of riding and should be avoided if possible. If you cannot avoid riding on the side of a hill, slow down and do not perform abrupt maneuvers. The Can-Am side-by-side -side is designed to carry the operator, one passenger, and cargo. Don't carry a passenger until you have experience riding alone in a variety of conditions and can proficiently handle your vehicle. Never carry a passenger if you judge his ability or judgment insufficient to concentrate on the terrain conditions and brace accordingly. Refer to the label on the left side of the steering wheel to find the total cargo weight limit. This includes the weight of the operator, the passenger, any cargo, tongue weight, and accessories. Heavier riders need to be particularly aware of the weight limit. Never ride with more than one passenger, even if the total weight would be under the limit. The passenger should be at least 12 years old and able to hold hand grips and place his foot on the footrest while seated against the backrest. He must not ride after consuming drugs or alcohol. Be sure the passenger is properly dressed. The passenger should wear all of the protective gear recommended for the operator, especially a helmet. Before starting out, instruct the passenger to buckle his lateral net and seatbelt, grab hand grips, and keep feet on the floor and footrest at all times. Watch the road, brace for bumps, and always keep his arms, legs, and head inside the cockpit. Do not exceed the weight limits for riders and cargo. 
Overloading wheel make accelerating, braking, and turning more difficult. Always reduce your speed when carrying cargo. You won't be able to stop as quickly with the maximum weight on board as you would without this weight. Overloading will potentially increase the risk of rolling over if the weight is high or toward the rear. Always secure the cargo in the center as low as possible and towards the front of the cargo box. Never carry passengers in the cargo box or on the upper or lower tailgates. Latch cargo box and tailgates before riding. Hauling a trailer affects the way the vehicle handles because of the greater weight and because the weight distribution is different. Set the low range gear using the shift lever. Reduce your speed and slow down more than usual before turning. Also, avoid sharp turns. There is a greater risk of tipping or rolling during extreme maneuvers. Avoid riding on hills and rough terrain. Allow more distance to stop. Before hauling a trailer, it's important to perform the pre-ride inspection of your trailer. Make sure the cargo is safely secured and properly distributed in the trailer before operating the vehicle. Improper loading of a trailer may cause loss of control. Always secure cargo as low as possible in the trailer to reduce the effect of a higher center of gravity. Don't carry too much cargo, even if the storage volume is big. Always refer to the safety labels on the trailer and the hitch to find out what the maximum cargo and tongue weight are. Too much weight at the tongue reduces steering control. Too little weight at the tongue can render the trailer unstable. Always use safety chains or cables when towing a trailer. Ensure that they are secured to the trailer and to the hitch and that they cross under the tongue. This concludes our review of the important safety information that you need to know before enjoying your Can-Am side-by-side. -side. Thanks for your time.